I'm a physicist, but I'm also a swing dancer. <laughs> I do a type of swing dancing called Lindy Hop, and I'd like to tell you about something that happened to me a few months ago. My wife and I, we were in Thailand, and we met up with a group of Lindy Hoppers, and we went out swing dancing. It was a great time, but I'll never forget this one dance that I had. See, my my partner, she didn't speak any English at all, and I didn't speak any Thai, and yet we had this incredible dance. This is one of the things I love most about swing dancing: this partnered connection, the fact that I could go to almost any city in the world, not know the language, and yet find someone that I could share an experience through dance with. I feel that dance. Can transcend words and allow people to communicate in different ways. Now, when I'm not Lindy hopping, my day job is a physicist. And as a physicist, what we're trying to do is learn what are the rules that govern the world around us. How does the world work? And what I find incredible is you only need a few simple, fundamental principles to explain most of the things that we ever experience. Take, for example, gravity. Gravity is the force that causes an apple to fall to the ground. It's also the same force that keeps the Earth in orbit around the Sun. All of the physics, all of the rules that govern the things that we normally experience, we call this classical physics. But if we were instead to take ourselves and shrink all the way down to the smallest things, like atoms. You'd find that the rules are completely different. This is the quantum world, and this is what I study. And in particular, what I study is a type of partner dance that happens at the quantum level. In my lab, what I do is I take the smallest chunks of light, we call them photons, and I bring them together and I entangle them. They become partners. And when I do this, they Become connected in a powerful way. In fact, it's the strongest connection that physics allows. And what's incredible is they don't have to be next to each other to remain partners. I could take them to opposite ends of the universe, and no matter what I did to this one or this one, they would still remain correlated. Einstein he called this spooky action at a distance. <laughs> I prefer to call it partner dancing at a distance. So this idea of entanglement is really difficult to explain because we don't have anything in our everyday experiences or lives that match it. I can't say entanglement is like this because there is no this that we experience. For me, sometimes it seems like magic. Fortunately, I have a magician backstage who specializes in using magic to explain complex ideas, and he's going to come out and do a trick that's going to illustrate just what I mean when I talk about surprising correlations. So, join me in welcoming to the stage magician extraordinaire Dan Trometer. Thanks, Chris. Sir. Well, indeed, the world of quantum mechanics is so tiny. And is so unlike our ordinary, everyday experience that it does seem like magic. And I understand there's a couple folks who have agreed to come up and help me actually do a piece of magic to illustrate this. Would you join me? Now, as I shuffle the cards, they adhere very tightly to the laws of quant、uh, classical physics. They have no choice. But in a moment, I'll bring out a device that will allow us to transcend those laws. Hello, Don、yes. and Ivan. Thanks for helping. Now, for the sake of yes, indeed. For the sake of time, we'll just use about a half of the deck of cards、uh, in order to demonstrate quantum entanglement. At this point, they exist firmly in the realm of classical physics. I have a device that will allow us to transcend the laws of classical physics and enter the realm of quantum mechanics that I picked up at Christer's lab at the Institute for Quantum Computing. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you. The quantum entangler. <laughs>、nice.
Thank you. You guys might want to step back a little. <laughs> just, just a little bit. Yep, here we go. Fire, a sure sign of science. <laughs> Now, at this point, these cards are entangled. So when I deal them into two piles, one for each, Don and Ivan, even though I'm separating them by a bit of a distance, they still maintain entanglement. Now, you'll each be mixing your cards in a particular way. I'll demonstrate how you'll do that. You'll pick them up and deal them one at a time as they come off the top into a small pile. Neatness counts. At some point, you'll decide to stop. When you've done that, you'll turn everything in your hands over, lay it onto the pile. You'll slide everything back off into your hand, and you'll do that again, dealing them as they come. Eventually, you'll stop, you'll turn over, and set down. Does this make sense? Okay, so please take your piles, deal them face uh, just as they come into a little pile. At some point, you'll decide to stop, you'll flip everything in your hands. Eh, Set it down and continue. Fantastic. And you'll do that a few times. Now, at this point, they're each making different decisions. Sometimes Don is dealing just a few cards, Ivan's dealing a few more before he flips. This will end up producing a situation wherein some of the cards are face up, some face down. Fantastic. And yet, if the laws of quantum mechanics apply, They are still entangled, and a surprising correlation will take place. Let's check the top card of each pile. Top card of this pile is a black 10. Top card of this card pile is a red 7. Christer tells me this happens in the lab, that sometimes you have to do a bit of a flip. So I'll flip this pile, and let's check now. They're both black 10s. This could be a coincidence. So let's check the next two. The next top two cards are both black aces. One's face up, one's face down, and yet they're both red nines. Two black eights, two black queens, two red tens, two black sixes, black fives, red eights, red fives, black threes, red queens. And those two red sevens, and that is quantum entanglement. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Back to you, k r i s t e r Thank you, Dan. So, what Dan did with these card tricks is he showed us that even though the cards were independently shuffled, they still remain correlated. This gives you a flavor for what we do in the lab with entanglement. But when I entangle photons, they actually have correlations that are even stronger than what Dan did. And at the Institute for Quantum Computing, we're trying to figure out ways to use these new rules of physics, these quantum laws, ideas like entanglement, to develop the future generations of technology. For example, take information security. When you go online and you take your credit card out and you buy something, you have to encrypt that information so a hacker can't get at it. Turns out, in the future, entanglement is going to play an important role with our types of communications that we'll carry out. You can also use these new laws of physics to build a super-fast computer. We call it a quantum computer. A quantum computer is so powerful... um, But I'd like to actually give you an example of of a problem it can solve much faster than what a regular computer can. Take, for example, factoring. Now, factoring is something that many of us learn in grade school and then promptly forget. So I'll refresh your memories about how it works. Take the number 15. Its factors are 5 and 3. 5 times 3 is 15. Take 21. Its factors are 7 and 3. and three. Seven times three is 21. Now, if I were to give you a big number, say a thousand digits long, and I choose this correctly, it would take all the computers in the world longer than the age of the universe, and they still wouldn't be able to factor it. A quantum computer could do it in under a day. This idea, this speed-up, 
um, it's, it's exponential. And just to help illustrate this idea of exponential speed up, I'd like to do a little demonstration with you. So I'm going to use this chessboard. And this bowl of M&Ms. So what we're going to do is we're going to play a little game with this chessboard. What's going to happen is this chessboard here has 64 squares. And we're going to double the number of, smart, or number of M&Ms that we place on each square. So on the first square, I'm going to put one M&M. And then I'm going to put two on the next one. And then I'll put four on the next one. And we could continue this game. I could you know, put eight, and then 16, 32, 64, and so on. And if we waited here long enough, by the time I got to the 64th square, I would need a bowl of M&Ms the size of the earth just to put on that square. Now, when we're trying to build a quantum computer, what we're doing is we're not just taking pairs of entangled particles, but we take many different particles and we entangle them, and we carry out this very complex dance, this choreography. And what happens is every time we add a new dance partner, we bring another quantum particle in, we actually double the power of our computer. It would be like adding a 65th square onto this chessboard, and then now what you get is you need two bowls of M&Ms the size of the Earth just to fill that one. That's the power of exponentials. Now, the computers that are based on quantum mechanics that I have in my lab, right now, we're, we're in this kind of region right here, this bottom corner of this chessboard. We can do things like factor 15 and 21. There's actually a paper just recently out on someone factoring 21. Where we want to get is over to here, because then we can start solving problems that a regular computer can't. And there's going to be some advances in material science breakthroughs that we have to carry out in order to achieve this. But I believe this future is very bright for quantum technologies. I think we're actually at the beginning of a quantum revolution. And so far, I've been talking a lot about these ideas of quantum mechanics and how entanglement is like a partner dance. But at this time, I'd actually like to dance it for you. Now, I, I need some help for this. So uh, I'd like to invite to the stage uh, one of my favorite bands, uh, Roberta Hunt and the Gents, as well as some Lindy Hopping friends of mine, who are going to help me illustrate all of these ideas we've just talked about. Entanglement as a partner dance, how you can use it to build an exponentially fast computer, and so on. And each dancer that you see is going to be a photon that will be entangled. Now, of course, we can't actually use dancers to build a quantum computer. My lab would be even more fun than it is. Um, but this, I think dance is a very powerful way to illustrate these ideas and to communicate them. But we ran into a problem. You see, entanglement is so big, so powerful, there's no way that we could just contain it on this stage or even in this large venue here. So what we did is we went out and we got almost 500 dancers from 36 cities around the world that have come together just to help illustrate this idea of quantum entanglement. Thank you. 